Welcome, beautiful soul, back to the Womanhood Project podcast. I'm your host, Lizzie Morse. And in today's episode, we're going to be diving into the highly political, juicy, and beautiful topic of free birth. What is it? Why do women choose it? And what it means for the broader discussion of autonomy and birth. So you might want to stick around if you have ever wondered, you've heard free birth, you want to know, like, what does it mean? Can you have one yourself? Um, Maybe you've had a vaginal birth after cesarean, or maybe you've only had cesareans. Maybe you're a first time mom. I think this discussion would be really beneficial for you. So to start, we need to define free birth. Now, again, I like I said, free birth is known as unassisted childbirth, and it also a lot of people will kind of go back and forth. I've heard discussions where it's really about the intention. Okay. So you hear unassisted childbirth. What do you think? Do you think that's like a woman at home giving birth by herself and nobody's around? Do you picture a woman in the hospital, like no one touching her and she like grabs her baby herself, catches her baby. Um, I think this is my like little definition. I'll give you a few definitions as well, but I see free birth as a woman planning, has intention to give birth without the presence of a licensed or unlicensed provider. And I add unlicensed because there are underground midwives, birth keepers, birth whoever's, people come up with all kinds of names now, but people who practice medicalized birth without a license, people who are there to um, take some kind of responsibility in your birth for um, making sure some kind of bad outcome doesn't happen. Um, And so free birth is different than having a home birth with a midwife attendant. Um, And in free birth, it's usually widely understood between all parties involved or attending, meaning there could be your husband, your sister, your best friend, whoever. They know that the person giving birth is the ultimate authority and nobody else. And the coin definition way back in the day from, I can't remember her name, um, but I will leave it in the show notes, is free birth is giving birth in fullest freedom without paying anyone to be paranoid for you, is what she said. There are no costs at any level as what is valued as core responsibility rather than buying someone else to take on this primal opportunity to cultivate responsibility. Now I dig that. See, that one's a little more like in depth than just like, uh, you just don't have a a doctor or midwife there. Um, that one's like, you know, really word plain. Now I do disagree with the middle section where she had said there are no cost at any level as what is valued as core responsibility. Um, you know, I had a free birth January, 2024, earlier this year myself, And I value so highly the core responsibility aspect. I value so highly the body freedom, the core, you know, all of the things. However, I think there are always costs involved. Now, I would say I'm very grateful that I did not have a ton of backlash for my community. Um, I also kept my pregnancy um, super secret and didn't tell people till the very end. I didn't tell people my birth plans. Um, I was just very strict with my boundaries when I was going intentionally to free birth um, because it was such a big decision to me because I was, the costs to me were scary. I was scared of being outcasted by commu- my community if something bad did happen. I was, or I just, I don't want to say scared, but I just knew that that was a risk. Like I, I could be seen as the one to blame because I'm taking responsibility over the fact that I'm not being monitored and Anyway, in my opinion and in the research, the monitoring doesn't improve outcomes anyway, but the world doesn't see it that way, right? People value medicine and medical authority over autonomy more often than not. So there are costs. There are things women have to think of no matter what the situation is, whether they choose to go to the hospital, whether they choose to free birth, there's always going to be a cost benefit analysis. Um, And that's just my opinion. Otherwise, I, I I dig the dig the definition and maybe that's me being like a little nitpicky um and again free birth is also different than born before arrival so born before arrival is is like 
if someone has hired a midwife and the midwife literally like doesn't make it on time. I mean, I guess you could, you could still call it a free birth and I'm not going to be like, oh, you did not have a free birth. But when we're really talking seriously about this topic and why women are choosing it, we need to be like we need to understand that someone giving birth in the car on the way to the hospital because they plan to birth at the hospital or someone giving birth before the midwife or before they made it to the birth center, their intention was not to do that. And you do see from the statistics and things I've seen that you, you see worse or just lesser great outcomes in those. It's not, they're still not terrible. Birth still works very miraculously awesome when you don't plan that. But a lot of times people just, there's a different, different outcomes because of their planning and um, their risk level and whatever they have decided um, to do in their pregnancy. I'm not sure if that's, you know, making much sense, but we could talk more about that later. So born before arrival is intentionally different than free birth. Um, it's still unassisted childbirth. It's not any less worthy. It's not any less valuable. They're just different by definition. Um, you know, when we're talking seriously. So yeah, the decision to intentionally free birth is completely personal and can be influenced by a variety of factors. Like every woman's path is different. Um, you can get 50, you know, to hundred women, listen to all their stories and they will have such uniqueness to each of them, but you will see many similar themes arise. And that's actually what I want to talk about today. Like the main, you know, juicy topics, the main reasons that we are choosing to birth without a medical provider in our homes or going to the setting of a hospital. Okay. Number one, let's talk about autonomy. Women will tell you that choosing a free birth gave them the bodily autonomy and body freedom that they were seeking in the past. And oftentimes you'll hear that their autonomy and choices were either denied, overridden, or simply ignored by standard operating procedures, whether it be at the hospital or in their home setting with a midwife. Being able to make decisions without that external pressure or interventions in their most vulnerable states is the bare minimum that they feel they deserve during birth. And they know that free birth can often create an environment that feels safe, sacred, and one where they are the highest authority over their autonomy, their body, and their babies. Okay. So when you're thinking about what autonomy means to you, that's, that actually is, again, a personal choice or a personal viewpoint, a personal uh, point of reference. My view on autonomy and what an external pressure or intervention is, is going to vary from me to you. So this is not saying that there's one right or wrong way, but this is thinking about it in the autonomy aspect. What are the things that you don't want to be pressured on? What are the, th what are the things you don't want to conform to in your vulnerable state? That's the things we think of. Okay, so number two, previous birth trauma kind of goes hand in hand with the autonomy aspect. And you'll see this obviously more in second or third, fourth plus time moms um, because they have been through the setting of medicalized birth before. Um, and that's really who I'm speaking to. You know, I'm not always talking to the first time mom because first time mom Lizzie was not going to free birth, even though she knew that was a choice. Um, but you'll see a lot more of us second, third, fourth time moms in the free birth space because of the feelings of being dismissed, violated, experiencing misinformed, unnecessary, and or unwanted interventions. Because those experiences in childbirth do leave lasting impacts. So you'll see that's why women choose a different path for subsequent births. That's why people make a different decision. I always said in my pregnancy, with my third, uh, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Um, and I just knew I've done one thing, didn't work out the way I wanted, did another thing, didn't work out the way I wanted, chose a different path once again that felt right in alignment to me. And things turned out, thank God, the way I wanted. So yeah, number three is personal or cultural beliefs. So for some, birth, birth is deeply connected to, you know, their spiritual background, their 
culture where they grew up from, the women that they were raised by. I feel like myself, I am entering this category because I feel like the women in my life were kind of if we don't have that, if we are not from that, we are creating that, which is beautiful. But these beliefs might be influenced by, you know, traditions or practices um, or the desire to, to connect with their higher power and the sacred rite of passage that is undisturbed birth. Um, I definitely, if you talk to many women that have had an undisturbed free birth, you know, physiological birth at home, unassisted, uh, it, it is psychedelic. It is crazy. It is wild. And that's not necessarily why we just give birth, but it is one of the amazing benefits. And that's why I listed it as number three. And I mean, you will, I feel like I hear this next part more. I'm going to talk about this. I'm not counting it as a big theme because this is definitely not what I hear. Like this is more of like the 1% than the 99. Um, when I hear midwives or doulas, come on podcast, they'll say, you know, I just hate that I see so many women choosing a free birth because they just don't have the money to hire X, Y, Z, or they don't do this. And I mean, there are probably definitely women, you'll see women say it and I'm not in their mind. I can't say what I think they're thinking, but to, I feel like thinking logically, even if someone like is outwardly saying like, oh, I'm having a free birth because I can't afford to hire you know, hire a midwife. I think even then they're obviously willing to take on the cost of free birth. And, you know, even if that's not great, if we need more accessibility, um, it's, it's still valid. Like (laughs) I, and I think sometimes we're not even being honest with ourselves. I think sometimes that might be something we say, um, to kind of brush it over. Like it's easier to be like, finances are hard than I want to do this because it's right for me. It's scared to take ownership of that. It's easier to be like, well, I just can't afford her. And so whose fault is it? Is it, you know, like who is, who, whose responsibility is it that you made that choice? Is it the lack of accessibility or, you know, anyway, so, but yeah, so you'll see people saying that they free birth out of the lack of options for providers or not having enough funds. And I mean, again, valid. I just think for some people, just some, you know, we, I, cause I, I, I definitely could see myself kind of using that as, as a way to, to brush over my actual intentions. But, um, I feel, yeah, I feel like even if these are the driving factors, you'll see women come back after they have their free birth, um, say they couldn't afford to hire whoever they'll come at, back after the fact and say that they couldn't imagine doing it any different, you know, no regrets. Like this is definitely the way they choose to give birth in the future. <coughs> so I want to share a bunch of responses that I got. Well, I'll share just a few. Um, cause I went into a free birth group and I asked, can you give me, um, in four sentences or less, the reason you chose to free birth? So I'll give you a handful here. So the first one I have four words, intuition, intimacy, autonomy, freedom. This next one says, I didn't want to pay someone to do the job I already know how to do. (laughs) I saw my birth story on T, my birth story. So it's like a show. I saw my birth story on TLC as a child. And I thought it was weird and alien. I always knew I wanted to do it all myself. By the way, did anyone else watch like all the TLC baby pregnancy? Like I always watched Kate and Kate plus a, I watched like the, didn't know I was pregnant. I would watch, was anyone else knew they were like secretly birth and pregnancy obsessed when they were kids? Cause that was me. Um, I birthed my first baby in 1999, completely unassisted. I free birthed because I wanted to take control over my births. Best decision, best decision I could ever make. I free birthed all the rest of my babies as well. I love that. This one, next one was so funny to me. As Eric Cartman says, I do what I want. (laughs) For that natural oxytocin boost, being in the comfort of my own home, and I birth better without anyone telling me what to do. That one was so funny to me. I have two more. Um, this one's a little sad, but sadly it's because I no longer trust home birth midwives. Never in a million years did I think she would screw me over in the way she did. And it was my fifth time home birthing. If they can screw over a veteran home birthing mom, they can do it to anyone. Many midwives and OBGYNs are really not all that different. And I wish I'd never let her into my home. 
And I felt like that one was important to share. Um, I had a free birth because I didn't want any necessary, unnecessary intervention done to me or my baby. My free birth was the most calm, least painful and least traumatic experience of my four birthing experiences. So that my friends is most of the reasons why women free birth without like the nitty freaking gritty. But what does this mean for the broader discussion of childbirth for women, autonomy, you know, regulated midwifery, doulas, all this stuff. I mean, there's so many things we can cover when it comes to these subjects. If you have questions, I would love to answer them. You can always email me. Um, you can, it's the womanhood project, the same as the podcast, but the womanhood project at gmail.com. Make sure womb it's, it's with a B womanhood with a B, but um, yeah, or you can even message me on Instagram at the Lizzie Morris, Lizzie with the Y. So T H E L L L I Z Z Y. Goodness, I'm tongue tied today. M O R R I S. I'm on TikTok and Instagram because these are the discussions we need to be having with women. These are, you know, the things we need to be talking about um, because free birth is a very valid choice. Free birth is a legal choice in every 50 states in the United States. I actually do know there are some countries where it is like politically illegal to plan to birth at home. So there's more I wanted to to research in that department um, to bring to you guys. So I'm make, making sure I'm not spreading false information while I think it's every woman's birthright. I do believe there's one or two countries that I, on the top of my head without naming them right now, that it's like, like actually you can get in big trouble, which is terrifyingly scary. So thank goodness if you're in America, I'm pretty sure Canada, all the, like most of the places, it is completely legal. You will not face legal repercussions most of the time. But again, there could be costs in other areas of our lives that definitely come up. So I don't want to act like this is just a oh, free birth, it's beautiful and it's magical and it's, oh, it's like, okay, it can be. Um, I think that's how it should be. But there's so much to discuss and so much to break down because we are talking about women who are recovering from extreme levels of trauma. And that's the people I'm mostly talking to. So if you, again, related to any of this, make sure you subscribe to the show make sure you check out the Instagram page. Um, the womanhood project also has a TikTok and Instagram page, which everything will be linked in the show notes. So definitely check it out. I'm going to also link the woman who gave the first free birth quote. Cause I just want to give her credit and I just can't remember her name and I don't have it written down like a amateur didn't have it ready, but I'll have that linked in the show notes. And yeah, guys, I have lots of episodes coming out. You can download the build your dream birth blueprint. Uh, that'll be in the show notes as well. It's a whole PDF, um, giving you your different options and what it looks like to birth intuitively and versus choosing a hospital or a home birth midwife and kind of the pros and cons, uh, about that. But with that being said, I thank you so much for being here. Oh, and actually last thing, actually, I'm going to add this. I now have buy me a coffee. So I'm actually really into coffee now. I used I never wanted to make a buy me a coffee page simply because I didn't drink coffee. But ever since I had my daughter, I'm a coffee drinker. Had a cup this morning. Freaking I'm I'm really into a uh, mocha. Mm, let me some mocha coffee. So I have buy me a coffee, which is just like a little way that we can keep the podcast going. I'm a stay at home mom of three. My husband works full time, and this is how I, you know, am able to full fuel la, 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 fuel and fill fuel, fill. I don't know which word I was going to use, but fill my cup up, but it's you being able to support the show means everything to me. So don't feel like you have to, but if you ever want to support the show, um, in any way you can check out the buy me a coffee page. So thank you guys so much for being here once again. I love you. See you next time.